you so much for joining. I hope you guys really loved it. We, we sure did. And actually, we had our little friend Elliot here propped up on the screen watching. And he was actually watching. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it was actually so cute. Oh, awesome. Hi, friends. I hope all your parents are there with you and that you're watching. And we're super ready to answer your questions. We're just going to wait for a bit a few more people to join here at 10. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for joining. It's super cold outside. So it's nice to be inside hanging in with her parents. Eh? <laughs> awesome. Keep them coming. Okay. So we're going to get you guys to send your questions uh, to the following phone number. So that's 204-878-3740. And I just noticed the number is upside down, but that's okay. <laughs> 204-878-3740. Three seven four zero. So you have to text that number to send in your questions, and then Amy will gladly answer them. And they're they have to be about Elliot. <laughs> Just kidding. It could be about anything. So I have Elliot here. He's one of our education ambassadors, and um, I'm the education manager here at Wildlife Haven. So basically, I get to spend all my day hanging out with these animals, which is super super fun. And the best part about my job is that is coming to your guys's schools, seeing you guys in classroom, and bringing along our ambassador animals. So we really really miss doing that, but we're super excited. Hopefully, really really soon, we'll be able to come see you guys again, and you'll be able to to see animals like Elliot and maybe other ones even closer up. Awesome. And I just wanted to say also thank you so much to the province of Manitoba um, through the Safe at Home program for making this possible. We're super grateful. Um, without their support, there would be no live episodes. So this is perfect. And and uh, they funded actually all the five episodes that will be airing every Saturday um, until March 6th. So stay tuned. Um, so I think we have some questions coming in here. Uh, from Ella. So will Elliot get any bigger? Oh, that's a great question. So the answer is no. This is actually as big as Elliot will ever get. He's full grown adult and he actually came in to Wildlife Haven this size. So we actually have no idea how old Elliot is. And if you watch the live, you'll you'll see that Dominic said that he could live up to 100 years. That's a long time. A very long time. <laughs> so we have no idea how old Elliot is right now, but we know he's about at least about 10 years because that's how long we've had him with us. Okay, and I think we have another one. How does a turtle shell get hard? Oh, that's a super good question. Oh, so that's an interesting question. So when turtles are born, their shell is actually pretty soft. And that's why when they're very young, they're really vulnerable to predators because they don't have that hard shell to 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 protect them because that's really the only thing that's protecting their the inside of their body is just this hard shell. So when they get older, when they start to develop, it just naturally hardens and it's actually made out of the same material as our bones. So it's made out of keratin. So it's really, really strong material. So predators have a really hard time getting through their shell. That's why they're they're really protected in it. Hmm. Okay, how do you think Elliot found his way to Manitoba if he's from Southern climates? That's such a great question. That is a great question. So uh, the answer is we're not 100% sure. So we just found Elliot wandering all by himself in Winnipeg. Um, but our best guess is that since he did come from the United States, someone probably had him as a pet um, and maybe they didn't want him anymore. So they kind of just left him outside or he could have escaped. So we're thinking he was a pet and just got out here, but uh, he wouldn't have survived in, in our temperatures and we weren't able to, to bring him back to his, his natural habitat. So now he lives with us at Wildlife Haven. And actually he's pretty lucky to have a birthday every day. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Um, so actually one of the questions is, did Elliot have a birthday cupcake yet? Did he? <laughs> <laughs> so not today, um, but as soon as we're done, I'll make sure that I give him his favorite treats, which are actually mealworms. Mm. So he's not so much of a cupcake eater. He's more of a worm eater. <laughs> oh, does Elliot have any other turtle friends? Okay, so that's a good question. So Elliot is actually our only turtle ambassador here at Wildlife Haven, but we do actually have four turtles in our hospital right mm -hmm. now. So they're patients. They're all Western painted turtles, and they actually came in because they all had broken their shell. 
So I said that their shell is very, very hard. And the same thing for Western painted turtles, but somehow they broke their shells. It could have been um, a car could have run over them or maybe a predator that was strong enough was able to just crack it. But right now they're all doing really, really well. They're rehabilitating really well. Yeah. And we're just waiting until the spring until we're able to release them back yes. into the wild. Yeah. Oh, Erin. Hi, Erin. Thank you for the question. So how do turtles breathe underwater? Oh, great question. Hmm. So that's an actually a really interesting question. Um, so they actually, when they're underwater, uh, just on a regular day, they don't really breathe in the water um, just because they're able to kind of hold their breath. They have super, super cool adaptations that allow them to kind of hold their breath for a uh, long periods of time but when they are hibernating because a lot of turtles um sometimes box turtles as well but mostly the turtles we have in manitoba will actually hibernate underneath the water so in in rivers or swamps or anything like that and what they actually do is they breathe through their butts oh yeah <laughs> So it's called cloacal respiration, and it's actually where, since their uh, their butts are actually pretty vascularized, they're able to to get a lot of oxygen uptake from vascularized areas, which is mostly their butt. So they they huh. do butt breathing <laughs> in the wild. <laughs> um. Where in the wild do box turtles thrive? Okay. Yes. Mm. So interesting point is actually box turtles used to be here in Canada. So they used to be in Ontario. They were found many, many years ago, but they're actually what we call extirpated. So they're not found in that region anymore. They're not found in Canada at all, mostly in the United States, um, along the southern and eastern, eastern area, all the way down to Florida, you can find them. Okay, so if you have questions, keep them coming. The number is 204-878-3740. And we have a few more. Uh, what makes Elliot an ambassador? What does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? That's a great question. So we use the term ambassador because we like to say they're an ambassador for their species. So Elliot here is our only turtle, our only box turtle that we have. So we use him to show people, to show people like this or at schools, at daycares, anything like that, um, about how, how really to peacefully coexist with these animals, um, how not to disturb them, how to make sure that, you know, we're leaving wildlife in the wild mm -hmm. um, because we do have a lot of animals that come in, um, you know, like Elliot, he, he was probably kept as a pet and then just let go, which isn't the best thing really. Yeah. So we like to educate people about, you know, how to interact with wildlife. If you do have a pet um, turtle like this, you know, how to properly care for them. So really we just use him to educate people. Perfect, mm -hmm. thanks. Um, hi, Jordan. Thanks for sending in your question. If you want to send in your names, then we'll be able to say them out loud. But hi, Jordan. So why are Elliot's eyes red? Oh, Ooh. great question. So Elliot's eyes are red actually because he is a boy box turtle. So boys will have the red eyes and then the females will have sort of a yellowy, uh, almost goldy uh, color. So that's a good way that you can tell uh, male and female box turtles apart. Mm -hmm. And there's something about the plastron too, right? Yes, there is. So this is actually for all, all turtles, not just box turtles, but their plastron for the males will actually be more uh, concave. So it'll be it'll go in a little bit. So we'll can see you if show? I can show you Elliot's plastron. If you can see, it's a bit hard to see, but it goes in. Mm -hmm. So it pushes in a little bit. And then the females will have kind of a flatter plastron. Okay, how do you fix a turtle's broken shell? Oh, great question. Wow. So we have an amazing dedicated hospital team who mm -hmm. are up to date with all of the new techniques about how to care for our animals. So for the turtles, they've actually been doing this new, uh, new technique where they take it sort of like an aluminum tape that you're able to just stick it on the turtle's shell where it's cracked and it brings the two, it makes sure that the two pieces stay together. And then the turtle shell is just able to naturally heal on its own. This does take quite a while. It takes a few months, just like it would if you had broken your arm, it takes a few months to heal. But after that, they're able to take the tape off and then the, the turtle shell is completely fine and we're able to release them back. Oh, fantastic. Look, he's wandering <laughs> away. <laughs> oh, hi, Jacob. 
Um, what do turtles do in the winter in Manitoba? Oh, great question. Hmm. So the turtles that we have here in Manitoba, they're actually aquatic turtles. So Elliot here is a terrestrial turtle, meaning he, he mostly stays above the ground um, on doesn't really venture into the water much, um, but our aquatic turtles will actually hibernate uh, in the water. So at the bottom of the water or the bottom of the pond or mm -hmm. anything, that's where they will hibernate. So um, they do the same thing that that any of the aquatic turtles will do with the cloacal res respiration. And they can stay underneath there for um, up to three to four months until temperatures get, get warmer for them. Wow. What? <laughs> Madeline, thank you for the question. Does Elliot need his claws trimmed? Oh, hmm. interesting question. So we actually never uh, trim his his claws at all. Um, so in the wild, they wouldn't. They would just naturally wear and tear. Um, and he has a lot of rocks in his enclosure, mm -hmm. actually, that he he climbs on. Yeah, just like that. So that that just naturally uh, wears them down, so that we don't actually have to have to trim them at all. And they're actually not they're not sharp. They're not they super sharp. No, if he's if he's uh, scraping me like that, it doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Hi, Julia. Thank you for the question. What should she do if she finds a turtle in the wild? Oh, okay. that's a very that's good, a really question. good question. Yeah. So. Um, it depends on the situation. So if you just see a turtle that is uh, just wandering on its own, you think it's completely fine, the best thing to do for them is just to leave them alone. Um, you know, they're best kept in the wild where they're able to, mm -hmm. to just be on their own there. But if you do find a turtle, you know, something like Elliot that you think doesn't belong here, or if you find a turtle with a cracked shell, mm -hmm. definitely give us a call. Um, and you can reach us at this number up here as well, any day, um, and we'll be able to answer your questions, walk you through the next steps, what to do. And then um, if we determine that the turtle does need to come in, then you can bring it to our center and we'll give it the best care we can. There you go. Thank you for that awesome question. Yeah. That was great. Um, what's Elliot's daily routine? <laughs> So usually Elliot starts with uh, getting his breakfast. So he gets one meal a day and um, it'll be uh, mealworms, fruits, vegetables, um, maybe some fish sometimes, anything like that. Then uh, we'll often take him outside of his enclosure and we'll just let him walk around a really big room because yeah. as you can tell, he loves to wander <laughs> around. It's hard to keep him in one spot. Yeah. <laughs> And then usually once we put him back, he'll take a little dip in his pool. He actually loves just sitting in his pool. Um, sometimes you'll you'll find him in there for hours on end um, and it gets nice and warm. So it's almost like being in a, in a hot tub. Um, and he just loves that. And then it's uh, lights out for him and start that again. And let's see. Um... Let's say we see a, a turtle trying to cross the street. You see like oh, Elliot yes. keeps going in the same direction. So what do we do when that yeah, happens? That's a good point. So if you ever see a turtle that is crossing the street, what you want to do is we do want to help them in that situation because a lot of turtles get, get run over by cars and that's how their, their shell gets cracked. But you never want to take the turtle and put it on the opposite side of the of the street that it was going. You always want to take it towards its destination mm -hmm. because they're just going to go the same direction again. So if you well, like he's on, doing now, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you put it on the other side, it's going to turn around and try to cross again. So always just put it on the direction that it's going, and that's the best way you can help them out. Great. Uh, could Elliot bite Amy? So he could if he wanted to. Um, luckily, he has never bitten anyone, but he actually does have a pretty sharp beak on him. And he uses that because uh, he actually is an omnivore. So he does eat um, not only fruits and vegetables, but he does eat meat. Mm -hmm. So he needs that strong beak to be able to tear, tear away the pieces of the meat. So if, you know, maybe I got in the way of him eating, he might chomp down a little bit. But uh, <laughs> luckily, we, he, we've never encountered and that. And he's pretty friendly. Yes. <laughs> and cute. <laughs> Great. Okay, so for those who are just joining us, um, if you have any questions, please text this number 204-878-3740. Um, that's 204-878-3740. Um, can turtles feel touch on their shell? Oh, yes. So they definitely can. Um, it wouldn't, touching them like this doesn't really hurt or anything, but if you were to really, really, you know, 
knock uh, on, it, yeah. knock on it. Yeah, they would definitely feel that. So that's why we're always super careful when we're when we're touching any of our ambassadors. Really, we mm -hmm. want to make sure they're really comfortable. So we would never uh, never knock on him or hit him anything like that. Mm -hmm. Does Elliot get along with other animals at the center? Um, that's a good question. And <laughs> it's hard to tell because he doesn't interact a ton with our other with our other ambassadors um, because he's mostly just in his in his own enclosure. Um, I would imagine that he would maybe not really like our raptor ambassadors because mm -hmm. raptors could be a predator of a turtle in the wild. So he probably would have that nat natural instinct to be afraid of those birds. So we try not to, you know, put them together just to keep keep everyone comfortable. With their instincts. Yes. <laughs> natural instincts. <laughs> okay, great. Um, Okay, so I if you guys don't have any more questions, we're gonna give you one last chance to send you your questions. So that's 204-878-3740. Um, and then we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, oh, we have one coming in here. Does Elliot ever go all the way inside his shell? Oh, great question. So I've actually only seen him all the way inside his shell once since I've been here. Um, so he doesn't do it quite often because mostly when he does it, it's either if he's um, sleeping at night, which we don't, we're not really with him at the night, um, or if he's really, really scared, he'll go completely in his shell, which he's never scared when he's with us. We keep him super comfortable, mm -hmm. we never put him any, any, in any bad situations. So it's actually very rare to see him completely in his shell. But when I did see it, it was very, very cool. Oh yeah, yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> wow. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much everybody for joining us today. We're gonna wrap up our questions. Um, so we are going to have a new episode of That's So Wild launch every Saturday um, in English at 10 a.m. And there's a second one in French that will be launching at 11 a.m. every Saturday until March 6th. So please join every Saturday morning um, safely from the safety of your own home. It's perfect. It's a great thing to do with your kids on the weekend. Um, like you see, we're able to learn so many neat and cool facts about wild animals and and really what we do here at Wildlife Haven, it's it's quite interesting and and uh, and amazing, actually. Um, so next week, we are going to be launching our pelicans episode. Um, we have pelicans in care right now at Wildlife Haven, um, and we're going to show you what they're all about. It's They're an amazing species, so we can't wait to show you. Um, so that's going to be at 10 a.m. next Saturday. So tune in on the same YouTube channel you're on now, and we're gonna do the same kind of thing. We're gonna have a live Q&A afterwards with uh, one of our animal care uh, staff. So that's it for today, everyone. Um, make sure to share with everybody um, and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're constantly putting out updates about this. Um, and uh, yeah, stay updated, but that's everything for today. Thanks, yeah. Elliot. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Okay, see you everyone. Bye. Bye.